back to the JMC reviews. After my last big review, I decided that we're going to be going back to the short film territory just to take a little breather from the bigger projects. After taking a look at the early films of George Lucas, Jared Hess, and James Cameron last year, I thought, why not take a look at one of the early films of one of my all-time favorite filmmakers, John fucking Carpenter. Excellent work. Excellent. <laughs> there isn't really much I need to say about John Carpenter. He's considered one of the masters of horror who redefined how the genre was done in the late 70s. And before he did Halloween, he did a whole variety of different non-horror projects, ranging from sci-fi to action. Today we're we'll looking at the first official short film he directed while a student at USC at the ripe age of 21. This is the eight minute short film about a peeping Tom who goes out prowling while donning a dollar store superhero mask, Captain Voyeur from 1969. <laughs> what kind of stupid name is that? After getting some very hand-drawn title cards and a quote attributed to a <laughs> men's bathroom. The short opens in a computer lab where we're very quickly introduced to our title deviant, played by the ironic but hilariously fitting named Jerry Cox. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> a bespectacle worker who looks like the red herring creeper you might see in a Lifetime movie. Seemingly bored with his duties, the aptly named captain takes notice of a pretty girl working in the lab and decides to follow her. After more hand-drawn tile cards, which you kind of realize half this movie is pretty much the opening credits, we see the captain in his home donning the voyeur costume of the evening. Captain Voyeur stares out his window with a telescope, trying to find the girl from the lab, and then things get even weirder in a way that may not do the film any favors. While staring through the telescope, Captain Voyeur apparently sees himself tiptoeing between the houses. What the hell is going on around here? Your guess is as good as mine. While on his route to peep on the girl from the lab, the captain makes several stops along the way, peeping in various people's windows, leading to some very bizarre encounters. The first window he stops by has him finding a seemingly normal couple having sex, and they spot him, but not deterred, just resume, acting like he's not even there. Don't ignore me! The second window has him finding a guy lying down while a cowgirl dominatrix prepares to give him the whip. <laughs> Yow! The third window has him come across, even though we don't visually see it, a woman who may or may not be engaging in... bestiality? Oh, Rex, where did you ever learn that trick? <laughs> What? That's it. That's where I draw the line. The fourth window has Captain Voyeur come across an apartment filled to the brim with lingerie, and he sits there patiently awaiting for the pretty lady to appear, only to discover it's the home of a very hairy-chested transvestite. You know, the more I recap this plot, the more this sounds like a creepy porno from the 1970s. Hence, why I'm wearing my Cinema Snob Bat Pussy shirt. Meanwhile, at Bat Pussy's secret warehouse hideout... <laughs> the captain finally arrives at the home of the girl from the lab. While watching her get undressed, he starts breathing heavily, sounding like Michael Myers' compulsive masturbating cousin. The girl sees him and, appropriately, immediately reaches for a gun and shoots Captain Voyeur. <laughs> and then the short ends on a very bizarre note where it cuts back to his apartment and for the first time we hear some dialogue with Captain Voyeur saying That wasn't very nice to do, was it? Mm-mm. And you didn't really mean to do it, did you? No. 
I guess he lived, and she decided, despite the creepy perversionness of it all, to give him a chance. And then, it just ends. I don't get it. So, yeah, this is a very, uh, bizarre short film, as a lot of short film projects are, but... I do think there's a lot to enjoy in this. It's basically just a um, stalking sequence that you would normally see in a much bigger thriller or comedy. You definitely see elements that would later be utilized much better by Carpenter when he made Halloween in the 70s. And while the humor is definitely a bit wacky, it's nothing more than you'd see in, say, Carpenter's Big Trouble in Little China. If you get into that crazy bit of 80s zaniness, then I don't think you have a problem problem getting into the goofy jokes that go on here, with the exception of some questionable sound editing choices. The short's got some good atmosphere, keeps you interested, and has a funny moment that'll either make you laugh or raise an eyebrow. I'm not sure how often Carpenter goes back to this short, but it's always good to see where a director got a start, and the film was actually unseen for many years before resurfacing in 2011, to which it was then selected for preservation by the National Film Preservation Foundation to show just how far Carpenter has come. So in that sense, I guess you could say it has that going for it. Excellent! <laughs> It's available on YouTube and various uploads. I definitely recommend giving it a watch just to see where a master got his start. And I will see you again, hopefully soon. Right there. Yes, baby, right there. Fucking peak freaks. <laughs>